Many people have asked about the connections of the kinds of work that's being done at the Salk and the relationship that it has to the COVID-19. There's a range of people in the Institute that are working on uh, issues that are, that are related. Sue Keck, for example, who's head of the NOMIS Center, has a series of studies that she's been working on that are related to immunity and in infections, including uh, vaccines. Janelle Ayers has a, a unique way and a, a unique uh, idea about how we as individuals can participate in making ourselves resilient in, in a way of protecting ourselves for the impact of the disease that may occur. Of course we need vaccines, of course we need antivirals, of course we need antibiotics, but that's not the whole story. And so um, you can't just think about patient versus pathogen. You have to think about the patient's body. You have to think about their physiology. You have to think about the damage that is occurring in, a, in an individual's body and be able to, to deal with that damage to ensure that that patient is going to survive. We look at um, infectious diseases and we ask, what is going on in the body, in that patient, with this particular infection case? And what do we need to do to promote the survival of that patient? So for a COVID-19 patient, um, again, they're acquiring, um, they're getting pneumonia, they're getting this um, acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS. Um, you may have heard they're getting these cytokine storms that are damaging their vital organs. They're going into multi-organ dysfunction and failure. So in these patients, it's not the virus that is causing the harm, it's the host immune response to the virus that is causing the harm. And so we're finding ways to be able to combat that and um, promote the, um, the stability and the health of the, um, the patient's vital organs and their physiological systems so that we can give those treatments to patients and so that they can actually survive the infection. One of the big questions right now is for those who are surviving the infection, what type of immunity will form? Will we generate this long-lived immunological memory, which we, I'm sure we will find that we do, uh, based on our, our study of, of people who survived prior SARS infections or MERS infection, we know that their immunity can be induced and will be long-lived in many of these cases, but the question will be how long? That's, a, that's an important question that, that we'll be able to start to uh, deduce by studying the, the patients who have survived, survived the viral infection. Um, and so I think that's going to be one important aspect to understanding the type and quality of the immunity that is formed by this infection. The other, of course, is going to be then which vaccines will give us the best protection, um, which vaccines are going to induce a state that's most um, uh, similar to what the virus itself has given us in a way that will give us the protective features of our of our immune system, of our memory T cells and our memory B cells, what, what is going to be elicited. In the case of memory B cells, one of their most important jobs is to produce antibodies. And so there's a big uh, focus right now on trying to figure out which antibodies that are being produced in people as a, as a result of being infected with, with uh, the COVID-19, which antibodies are they producing that will be the most protective? And this is in part so that we can understand what the quality of immunity will be after COVID-19, but also uh, because currently one of the thoughts for therapy is to use what we refer to as passive immune therapy, where we, tr we physically transplant antibodies from someone who has survived the infection into somebody else who is experiencing a much more severe uh, infection and who might die as a way to try to help them uh, survive survive that infection. So, so understanding the detailed uh, nature of these the quality of these antibodies that are going to be the most protective is, is another big area of research.